We're continuing with the renovation of the, of the home here, particularly this room. And we, we're redoing the fireplace mantle and we, we pulled the tile off of there and all that. But anyway, we decided to pull this carpet up. So we've got, we have about 294 square feet to do. We chose vinyl flooring. I've got two big Huskies. They do some damage to a floor. And so we went with life proof. Now you can get vinyl flooring from Costco, a lot of different places. We'll tell you why we, why we selected life proof and we'll go through that. But right now we're gonna tear this carpet up and then we're gonna step you through how we lay this down. We're gonna start pulling this back. And you gotta watch it because some of these little tacks here come up. And then we're gonna start rolling. Rolling this and pulling it back. Just like that. And we're gonna take the whole rest of this thing off just like that. Here's a pro tip guys. Before you roll up a whole room like this, maybe cut the carpet in half through the room or this roll is gonna be crazy heavy. We're gonna pull up all the tack board next. We've gotten the carpet off. Then you want to dispose of this in a box or something, so, something so you're not, um, you know, stepping on it, and then uh, and just dispose of it. So we'll get those in a little box, and we're going to go along here, and we're going to use a nail pry bar, and then we're just simply going to pry all this up. Okay, so you're just going to get underneath there, and then we're just going to pry pry them up, one by one. It's like that. All right, so we've pulled all the tack boards out and we'll have to go back through, check for nails. And now we're pulling the rest of the carpet pad off. We've got one side off, we'll work on this side, work on the nails, groom the floor, make sure we get all the nails out and we're ready to start laying a new floor. All right guys, so you'll notice here, I'm using these needle nose pliers to get all the staples from the carpet pad up. Make sure you do this step because your floor needs to be completely flush before the vinyl flooring goes down. Okay, we're just using, we've already gone through with the blade, try to cut the caulking from the wall and the trim board as best we can. Now we're just creating a little space so we can pry it off. So we're using a little putty knife to do that to create some space. And then we'll go on with a five and one tool, widen that a little bit. But we just want to create some separation with the least amount of damage. Now we'll start working our way back. A little bit of a pry bar. We'll get it in there. Slide this in there so we can pry a little bit. There we go. We just get as much as we can, don't try to get it all. Okay guys, so we are here cutting the vinyl flooring for this. Now, you can use a razor blade, and if you've seen a lot of the videos, you've probably seen this, you can use a razor blade to score these boards and then snap them in the half. We were doing that, but with this flooring, it was taking a long time to do, and you really had to dig in and push to do that. Now, the, especially the trouble is, along our walls, we're having to cut really thin planks on each side of the wall. Now, to do that with the razor blade, the first time we did that with the razor blade, since we were snapping off such a small piece, when we went to snap it, it actually broke more of the vinyl flooring. So we figured there had to be a better way to do this. So we're using a table saw. It also says in the directions, you can use a jigsaw. A jigsaw is a little bit more freehand though. So we opted to do the table saw. Now guys, if you've worked with table saw, you know it's very dangerous. So you gotta pay attention. You gotta know what you're doing. We've got a speed square on here. We've got our measurements down. We've got our saw. Make sure that you're wearing a mask for this and some glasses. You don't wanna be breathing in this stuff and you don't definitely don't want it in your eyes. So we've been ripping through the boards really fast by cutting them like this. It gets us a perfect straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these boards and we're going to fit them against the wall as a plank. We just got off the table saw with this plank. What we're gonna do is you do not want any debris in the tongues of these. 
because they will not snap together properly and they'll ripple and break. So we've got an air compressor. If you have a vacuum, you can use a vacuum. We're just going to use our air compressor to blow it off and get down into the grooves in here to blow everything off. That way, when we go to stick them together, there's no debris in those channels because people have a hard time trying to get these to lock because a little chunk or something will get stuck in there. So make sure to clean these out and wear eyeglasses. One thing to note here guys is that you'll see that I'm using a scrap piece of vinyl flooring to kind of snap these pieces together. The reason for that is if you just always use the metal bar, sometimes that can chip and crack the tongue and groove. The tongue and groove of these vinyl floors are pretty fragile and you want to make sure you don't crack or break any pieces of those or your floor just won't click together as well. So the thing that's going to take you the most time is setting up those first three lanes of boards, of planks. And once you get those first three set up, then it goes relatively quickly. If you've got some special cuts like this, then you know, you're gonna have to do a few more cuts. And then what we did is we cut these just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. And because we're gonna, we're gonna lay our transition piece in here that transitions to the tile. And so it has a little track and we're going to lay that right in there. We'll show you how we do that. So we made this a little larger so that we could get that track in there. And there's still, still some float room in there to do that. All right, there's a hard way to cut vinyl plank flooring and there's an easy way. So we want to show you what the easy way is. But we're going to show you the traditional method. And right here I have a, uh, a speed triangle and then I have a knife. And then what you're typically, typically going to do is you're just going to score it, right? You're just gonna you're just gonna score it and you got to be careful because it could move on you just like you can see there and there's always a chance for injury right for, for me it's a chance of injury so you got to do a really good job scoring it as you can see that there and then you want to come back down here to the end and you want to just make sure that you've got that cut right so I, that's a lot of work then you got to make sure that you can break you can break it now the cheaper the plank, the easier it is to do. But this stuff here, then you're gonna score it on the back like here. All right? And for most guys and gals, that's probably gonna work just fine. So let me show you an easier way to do this. Less labor intensive and a whole lot safer. I'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna take this plank here. This is called a Roberts laminate cutter. Got this at Home Depot. It's about $18 for, I don't know, four hours or $25 for 24 hours. I just paid 25 bucks. But for the amount of cuts that we had to do, it made it very easy. So I'm not going to do any measurements, but you can do your measurements there. And I'm just going to stick it through this little guillotine here. All right. Stick it through there. And it has this little lever. And then all I'm going to do is... Lift up, nice clean piece there, and look at that clean, right? Matter of seconds to do it. So you have some nice clean cuts. I'd highly recommend the, it may not be Roberts, but I highly would recommend one of these vinyl, I'm sorry, one of these laminate cutters because these are fantastic, gonna save you a lot of time, gonna keep you safe, you're gonna keep your fingers, you're gonna keep your knees, uh, it's just a lot easier to do. So check these out. We got this one at Home Depot. Uh, they're for rent. I would recommend it. All right, we've got the floor pretty much all down. We're working on our very last edge. You can see you might run into some door trims like this. This goes to our outside patio. So what we have to do here is we're going to have to cut. So what we actually did is we took a little piece and we found what the threshold was, that little tolerance there and we marked it with the pencil. Now we're gonna get in here and we're gonna cut that. Now they make special door jam cutters for this or if you have you know, an oscillating tool, we picked this one up at Harbor Freight, Chicago Electric um, oscillating tool. We've got a, a little bit on there and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get in here 
as you can kind of see right there. Let me try to get that focus for it. There we go. And we're just gonna cut on that line and start kind of cutting that out. Now, make sure so you don't, that oscillating tool doesn't hit your floor. Put some cardboard or something down there just in case you don't wanna nick this nice floor you just put in. So, we're gonna do that for that door jam. It's right there in the center that we need to do and then at the far end. And then after that, it's home free, home free, and then we're just gonna slide in these and tap these in and then we'll show you what the rest of the floor looks like. All right guys, we've got the flooring all down. Now, if you've watched some flooring videos, some guys, when it comes to the vents in the ground, if you have vents on your ground, what some people will do is they'll cut around those vents as they're laying the floor in. We did not wanna do that. Um, it just looked like it was gonna to take too much time. It was much simpler for us to just lay a full plank over top of our vent. So we've actually got a vent right here and we marked on our wall where that vent was and then we know that it's three and a half inches off of the wall. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use a drill. We're gonna drill down into the center of this little plank right here. And then once we have that, we'll probably put you know a hole or two or three or four holes and then we'll use a jigsaw to cut our pattern around to cut that vent out. That way we can pop that vent straight in there. All right guys, and there you have it. That's the jigsaw cutout right there. Worked perfect. And we can slide our vent right on top of there and just like that. So I think that's the fastest way to do it. You can definitely, you know, cut around it if you'd like to. But I think if you just mark on your wall previously where your vent is, you know the measurements, how far off it is, start with the drill, make a hole, you know, down into it and then use the jigsaw to cut it out. It works really easy and you get a perfect fit for it. All right, we wanna show you guys some of the finishing aspects of this project when installing your vinyl flooring. Um, we got to this point where we ran up to our existing wood floor. Now, this wood floor moves into our kitchen. We're not quite ready to rip all of this up. Um, and I know it kind of looks weird with these two colors running into each other, but we're not currently ready to rip this wood up yet. We just wanted to get rid of this carpet and complete this room that we're doing here first. So while we wait on that, we needed a transition piece. And the reason for that is when we ripped out the flooring down here on the carpet, there was a thick pad underneath of that, okay? So that raised it to the level of where this wood floor currently is. Now, that ran us into an issue because you can see that there's a steep drop and it might be hard on camera and I'll try to get down a little lower for you guys, but this is a pretty steep drop here. So what we need it to do is, you can see in this gap here, we took our leftover pieces from our, from our flooring that we, we had, we cut this on our laminate flooring cutter so we could get these really thin slices and we're dropping them in here. And the reason we're doing that is our track, if we just put the track for this, multi-purpose reducer and we picked up this up at floor and decor and it's a multi-purpose track reducer so you can see one end is a lot thicker than that lip there and let me show you what that actually looks like when it sits on top of something you can see right there okay so this sits on the laminate flooring and this goes into the track to hold it down tight and I can't even lift that up and then this lip goes over your existing wood flooring okay so what we needed to do though is this track, we had to raise it up because if we didn't put this little vinyl strip down here, it'd be on this exposed wood down here and it just sits too low and it was kind of at a weird angle. So we just took these little strips, we dropped them in here and inside of your multi-purpose reducer kit, screws will come in there. So that's gonna hold this down. So you can see what we're doing for this entire thing right here. Now, an important thing to do with this, guys, is still leave a gap in space in between. Don't let this run all the way against here because if you ever do need to replace a, fl um, a floorboard, you can get these spreaders, okay, that will spread the floor apart, but you need to have space. That way you can remove one of these planks. That's why they call it a floating floor, so you want it to be able to float. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in the rest of 
these multi-purpose reducers. We're gonna put them in, you can kind of see right there how it's coming out on this track. And it's super easy to do, seems a little intimidating. At first when we saw this project, we were like, oh crap, how are we gonna do this? Moving from floor to floor. But once we found this reducer, and this is a steep reducer, you know, it works perfect. So I'm gonna set it on the camera, we're gonna tap these in, we're gonna drill down these things with the tracks and we'll almost be done with this project. Okay, we've got our track in and we've been putting in the reduction step there. And you can see right there, this track's in. This is our last one that we'll be putting in. So it's really easy how these work guys, where this green is, is what's gonna sit inside the track here. You can kind of see it from a little side profile there. So we're just gonna set that in there. Okay, and then use a rubber mallet, okay? Don't use a real hammer. Use a rubber mallet and you're just gonna tap along the side and you're gonna tap all the way down till you get there. You might have to um, tap it back a little bit to make sure that you get, that you close the gap, okay? But make sure you use a rubber mallet, take your time, pound it in a little, 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 little. You don't have to pound super hard to put it in, okay? All right, we're gonna go ahead and finish that. Hey, view proof, here we go. We have our finished product here. Just finished off the living room. So the walls, we redid this entire room. So the walls, agreeable gray on the walls. We painted the ceilings white. We put in this fan here. Um, we also painted all the trim boards. And if you remember, there used to be carpet in here. We ripped out the carpet and we laid down this vinyl flooring from Life Proof. And then we also installed this TV up here. We put this big TV up here and we just did the fireplace in here. Super excited about this. We redid the mantle. It used to be a dark color. So we primed that, sanded it down, did everything we needed to, painted that white. And then we installed some tile on the ground in front of it, as well as tile on the back of the fireplace. Now, if you can see right here, we still have to do this. We had to order in the T transition for the floor to the tile. So that, that will be coming in. But we just wanna get this video out for you guys so you guys can see everything. Um, the other thing that we did is we put in the step re reduction here that you can see. We also had to, on our baseboards, we had to come in and trim right here so that it could fit over. Uh, yeah, so that is the project in all. It probably took us two days to do the floor. And once again, guys, we are complete newbies at this. First time laying a vinyl floor like this. Took about two days to do. Uh, we had some great tools from, you know, Harbor Freight, Home Depot that we rented that made the job a lot easier. So this is definitely a project you can do. <laughs> you know, first, first, if you wanna do a renovation, just start with the walls. That can make a huge difference as it did in here. These used to be a nasty tan color. The agreeable gray really brought them out. Then, you know, simple things like light fixtures change the room. And then this fireplace project, we were very intimidated about doing this fireplace project, but we just got into it and it was actually relatively easy. Even laying down the tile and putting the tile on the back of the mantle was not that challenging. It actually went pretty smooth. The other thing that we did is, and you can check out some of our other videos where we'll have this content and I'll make links down below to it, but we put in these boxes here. So you can see behind the TV, all of these cords that we have. And what that does is it hides everything. So we got our speaker that will go right up here. Our speaker will come up here. We have the wires that come out of the wall, but everything's hidden. So it's a floating TV completely. And those wires go in this box and they come out all the way down here, out here. So it keeps everything hidden. We have videos to that, tools that we use for that. Guys, this was a really fun project. We're working on a bunch of other things in the kitchen. Check out all the renovations we've been doing for you guys. We've been really busy. We're excited to share that with you guys and help you guys change your spaces. Thanks for watching ViewProof.